Kia ora koutou. Once upon a time, once upon a time, there was no such thing as a selfie. If you wanted a picture of yourself, you had to get someone else to take it. And if you were on your own and you wanted a picture of yourself, then you had to ask a passing stranger to take the photo. Here's one of me, taken in New York in the 90s, uh, taken just that way. You did run the risk of, uh, the small risk of losing your camera. But you also more likely were going to have an interesting conversation with a stranger. For those of you who've grown up in the era of the smartphone and Facetune and endless instant photos in the palm of your hand, it might be hard for you to get your head around the idea that when I was in my 20s, I actually didn't have, didn't get to see many pictures of myself. I didn't really have a way of scrutinising my own appearance and I didn't really have a way of comparing myself to other people. Now we contrast that with now and there's really nowhere that's inappropriate for us to be taking a selfie these days. We can get into people's bedrooms and their bathrooms and their gyms. I can take a selfie right now on the stage. Smile everybody, oh, hang on. There we go. And I can post that to, in seconds, to multiple platforms. I'll probably do that when I hop off stage. Um, <laughs> and anyone, anywhere can see that. The way, I don't remember actually taking pictures of my food back in the day either, and I don't remember really seeing pictures of other people's food. Um, I don't think it was a thing. Whereas now, not only are we, are we photographing everything that we eat, and it's like if we didn't do that, it didn't happen, uh, but we're getting food that is designed to be photographed. We've got dishes in restaurants that are designed to be grammable. So the way that we present ourselves and the way that we interact with others has completely changed in a really relatively short time. Uh, and that is largely down to social media. Now, I think social media is amazing. I want to say up front that I love social media and I think it connects us uh, and it entertains us and it can be a great agent for social change. I love Instagram. I, I post things that I'm into on Instagram. My, my sewing projects and my vintage stuff and, my, and of course I post pictures of my food and it has connected me with communities of people who are also into that stuff uh, and that is really great but I think social media also has the potential to be damaging. We know we have big problems with things like hate speech for example but I think there's a smaller and more personal way that it can be damaging potentially and that is in the area of our health. Now, I write and talk and think about food and health. That's my job. And I reckon social media is messing with our heads a little bit when it comes to food. So I want to talk today about some of the things that social media is teaching us, for better and for worse, about food. First of all, the good stuff. There is a ton of amazing food out there. There is a beautiful, diverse world of really, really interesting food, and social media is a way for us to discover that. I use it for recipe inspiration and for restaurant tips and when I'm traveling. It's amazing. So if social media, if, if Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube have helped you to discover something new, if, they've, if it's helped you to to try a new and healthy food, then that is really great. But social media also means anyone can post anything. There's no barrier to entry. Everyone is a publisher now. And anyone can publish anything about food and health, about nutrition. Uh, anyone can publish their own theory, their own diet, their own exercise regime, their own kind of nutrition advice, whether they know anything about that topic or not. Anyone can portray themselves as an expert. Now that has some consequences. It has created a whole raft of so-called influencers, and we'll talk about them a bit more. Uh, and the content that they're posting is sometimes not at all founded in anything resembling evidence or science. And it's also sometimes quite extreme. Uh, think about the content about healthy eating that you see on social media. Is it uh, saying eat everything in moderation and a wide and varied diet? It probably isn't, right? It's more likely to be 
the extreme stuff, the, the raw diets and the keto diets and the juice fasts and the, the how to get shredded. It's the hashtag uh, fitspo and hashtag clean eating. Ironically, it's also hashtag wellness. And I think social media platforms enable this. Uh, it's very easy for us to see extreme stuff uh, on YouTube, you can start with a very simple search for vegetarian recipes, and within maybe four or five videos, you can be at raw vegan juice fasting. It's easy to be exposed to extremes, even if we're not looking for it. There's also quite a lot of pseudoscience out there masquerading as wellness. Um, I think you probably know the kind of thing I mean. It's, it's the stuff that sounds kind of sciencey. And it's um, very often pushed by people who will say they don't want you to know, they being the, um, the scientific establishment or the medical community, they don't want you to know about this or they are really behind the times. So at best that's kooky and funny and we can laugh at it. But at worst, that can be damaging. It can push people into... Uh, eating nutritionally compromised diets, and even into disordered eating. It's not that big of a jump to go from cutting out one food for health reasons into what has come to be known as orthorexia, an, an unhealthy obsession with healthy eating. There was a study of social content, this is starting to be studied now, this stuff, uh, on hashtag fitspiration which found that the images, while they can be inspiring for people, uh, also contain elements that are likely to be damaging to the viewer's body image. So remember that just because someone is famous, just because they have a lot of followers on social media, maybe they've lost a lot of weight, it does not make them an expert in anything. They may chug down a detox tea and they may take a particular supplement or follow a particular diet or exercise regime, but it doesn't mean that that is a good thing for you to be doing too. And it might even be that, that following that kind of advice can be damaging to your mental health and your physical health. The emphasis on extremes, I think, promotes Division, creates division. Because on social media, everything needs a label. A hashtag is a label, right? And the more we divide the healthy eating content that we see into labeled categories, the more we get this impression that there's a lot of confusion out there about how to eat and, and what to eat. Uh, it becomes very tribal and it, it all seems very hard. We feel excluded from the tribe if we're not following one of these people. Labels emphasize that difference, not the common ground. Uh, and social media really amplifies this idea that there's lots of argument going on out there about nutrition. My diet is better than your diet. And it's one of the main reasons why I hardly ever go on Facebook now because I was just getting so frustrated with the conversations about nutrition degenerating into this uh, slinging of insults. People are very entrenched in one way of thinking about how to eat, and, and it seems like it's very difficult for them to acknowledge that there might actually be more than one way to eat to be healthy. Um, it's sort of an idea that because one thing that someone says we disagree with, that everything that they say is nonsense. And I think that is a really a shame. Uh, because if you think about even a, a, a vegan and a keto dieter who, who on the surface might not have that much in common, uh, they will actually have some common ground. There will be something that they agree on, even if it's just that it's a good idea to eat a lot of vegetables. The hashtag plant-based is a, another good example, speaking of vegetables, of, um, of this kind of tribalism that we're seeing. That label, plant-based, has been adopted by the vegan community to describe the way that they eat. And that is great, but there are a lot of other ways of eating which are also truly plant-based, which could, not necessarily plant only, but they're plant-based, and they could also be using that hashtag, that label. 
if we are going to solve the big problems that we have globally, I mean, the big are serious problems like obesity and diabetes and climate change, because these things are really all linked, then we have to ditch the labels. We have to ditch the tribes and we have to try and think about the common ground. We have to think about what we have in common and how we can work together not spend so much time and so much energy arguing and trying to point out all the reasons why the other person is wrong. Another thing we get from social media is the impression that everyone else's life and everyone else's food is better than ours. How often have you been scrolling through social and you feel like Everyone else is at some fabulous party or they're having an amazing lunch or and they're, you know, they're beautifully made up and they have perfect clothes and you are there on the couch in your sweatpants. I feel like that. I feel like that all the time. At any given time, I can feel like half the people I know are on some amazing tropical island holiday uh, and the others are at a cool party event that I haven't been invited to. Um, it's nonsense, of course, and we know in our heart that it is nonsense, but it can still be damaging to our mental health. There is, uh, there is research to show that the longer, people, the longer time people report spending on Instagram, for example, the more anxious and depressed they feel. And that is largely due to comparing themselves to what they see on screen. That old saying about, uh, about comparison as a thief of joy, it seems to be true. Uh, we know, though, that what is on social media is not real life. It is, at best, edited highlights, and it is, at worst, complete fiction. When we're looking at our friend's feed, we are not seeing the work stress and the bad breakups and the money worries. We're only seeing the good stuff, so we get this very false idea of what other people's lives are like. And then there are the influencers. An influencer is someone who uses their online profile, their online persona, to sell stuff. An influencer is just a salesperson. And you'll hear a lot about how the successful ones are really real and authentic. Uh, but their job is to sell stuff. They present fictional content, and it is often paid for content, which we really need to remember. A wellness influencer, it is their full-time job, a lot of them, to be healthy and to present that healthy image to the world. They're not just popping out in their lunch hour and taking a quick selfie. They are spending all their time presenting this healthy image. The idea of being an influencer should not be a job, in my opinion. It should not be something that our kids aspire to either. But for now, uh, while it is, my advice is that if you're seeing any content from these people who, that is making you feel bad about yourself, unfollow. Uh, and if you are an aspiring influencer, then to you I say, seek to have true influence. Uh, and true influence doesn't come from just having a lot of followers on Instagram. It comes from creating something meaningful. So use that power. Use your power for good. Use it to shine light on causes and issues that you believe in. Uh, use social media as a means, not an end. Don't just post pretty pictures. Uh, start conversations. When we see all the stuff uh, on, about food on social media and food and health, it, it looks beautiful and the plates are lovely and amazing and the food all looks um, gorgeous. And I, and I love that. And I do try and make my food look beautiful as well. But uh, I think that also that there's a risk there. And that is that it can create the impression that healthy eating is difficult and time consuming and expensive and ultimately unachievable. It can make us feel like healthy food is somehow in a different category from regular food, which is a real shame um, because actually healthy food is regular food. We do not have to be uh, 
going to a special shop and buying weird stuff to, to eat a healthy diet. Anyone can achieve a healthy diet and it doesn't have to fit into any kind of labelled category. It doesn't have to have a hashtag. So short of giving up social media, which I don't want to do, and I'm pretty sure that you don't want to do that either. What can we do? How can we use this thing, this powerful thing, to improve our health, for the good of our health? Well, firstly, we can be discerning. We can understand that what we see on the screen is not real life. Just as what you post on your social feed is not a true picture of your whole life, what you see from other people isn't either. And that goes double and triple for uh, the celebrities and the stars and the influencers. I mean, I promise you when it comes to wellness that uh, no one is sitting down seven days a week to perfect plates of kale and kimchi washed down with kombucha. Even the most perfect influencer is going to be, uh, you know, having peanut butter on toast sometimes for dinner. Secondly, I think, we have to understand that you have power. We are all consumers, and just as consumers we have power, we can choose to buy something or not to buy it. Uh, on social media we have power. You can choose to engage or not engage with content that you're seeing. That like button has got power. So unfollow anything that looks like pseudoscience. Uh, and it, Unfollow anyone that's trying to sell you something, especially if they're not making it crystal clear that, what that, that, that that's what they're doing. They're trying to sell you something. And it doesn't matter whether it's a flat belly tea, for goodness sake, or a, or a, a diet or a lifestyle, which is what they call it now, um, or a supplement or an exercise plan. Just unfollow anything where it's not really very clear that this is a sales pitch and definitely unfollow anything that you're seeing in this area that is making you feel bad, bad about yourself. If you do that, you are gonna feel better, you're gonna be happier, and you are going to be healthier, most likely. There is a ton of stuff on social which is positive and which will fill your feed with positivity. So seek that out, uh, look for that. And I, a tip from me is that it probably won't have the hashtag FITSPO and it probably won't have the hashtag wellness. And then uh, if all else fails, you know, just look for the cats because there is nothing like a celebrity cat, in my opinion, to make you smile and, and feel better when things are all getting a bit on top of you. Lastly, when it comes to food, I just my final message is just relax and enjoy it because that's what food is about. And don't worry about whether what you are eating fits into anyone's theory or makes you part of anyone's tribe. Uh, you don't need to have a hashtag to be healthy. You don't forget that real life is not on a screen. Real life is, is out here. Uh, this is where the best sharing happens. So we need to look up uh, and we need to realise that not everything needs a photo and our food does not need to be Instagrammable. It just needs to make us happy. Thank you.